know, you uh, received uh, the first production prototype of our EQP183. That was back in, I think, August of 2009, quite a, quite a while ago. Sounds right. Yeah. And uh, you have uh, used that for several years and, and then recently uh, traded those in, upgraded to our brand new EQM 1S3, um, the mastering version of our 1S3 equalizer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about, you know, how you use the original 1A3s and then maybe how your workflow has changed to incorporate the, uh, the newer models. Well, first of all, I have to go on record and just say sincerely, like, thank you for making this thing because <laughs> there's a lot of people that have made similar stabs at this. And, and like I've told you from the beginning, I'm not really answering your question right now, but <laughs> like okay. I've told you from the beginning, um, you know, I, when I used to be a session musician for, for other producers in the 90s, I, I was first introduced to the magic of great, you know, Pultex. Um, and that nothing else could do that. That was what I got from it, you know. Uh -huh. um, great engineers. Um, like Brian Schubel and Joe Ciccarelli and people, people that came up through A&M Studios in the 80s. Um, it was just such an education for me, and I always thought, you know, one day maybe I can, maybe I can afford one, uh -huh. and uh, and 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 then that day arrived, and I started looking for a good old one because I tried all the other ones that were available at that point. And nothing really did it for me. And then when uh, Ryan Hewitt told me about what you had made and that I needed to hear it, I did and I flipped out and then got two of them. Right. And then had, it's all, on, it's all documented on uh, Gear Sluts. We had right. a pretty intense all day long shootout between um, the two that I had from you, uh, two really choice vintage pull tax mm -hmm. and um, and two made by another great company that makes great gear and uh, and everybody in the room agreed at the end of the day that these ones the ones that I had uh, slayed everything hmm. and and I had a feeling that would happen but I didn't really know yeah you know and I, re I realized that whatever the results of that day were everyone involved was going to talk about it publicly right. um, I mean every one of them sounded really good. Nothing okay. sounded broken at all. But in terms of like just doing that zingy magical thing that I, my perception of what a great vintage one did, um, the one that knocked that out of the park the most was, was yours. So seriously, thank you. And I know you spent mm -hmm. years and you, I don't know if people know how long <laughs> you spent developing this. It's not yeah. like you kind of Spent six months in your garage. Right. I'm like, okay, let's throw this against the wall and see what people think. Uh, see what people think. It's uh, wasn't it like close to a decade or something. It I mean, was close to that. Um, as you know, I work full time for Hewlett Packard as a research and development engineer, and uh, so I started out doing it part time. You know, spending my evenings, my weekends, and so forth in the basement. And there was a lot to recreate because we had kind of made a commitment up front. Unless it's a real pull tech when we're done. We're, we're not going to manufacture it. And I had no idea what I was taking on at the time. That, you know, there's a large set of transformers, input, interstage, and output. There's the tapped inductor. There were capacitors that are no longer made anymore that I had to have custom made. And I basically deconstructed each one of those transformers turn by turn and, uh, you know, faithfully recreated each of the transformers before I could even start. Um, you know, with the rest of the product, you know, the panels and all the other stuff. Right. Um, so, um, I worked with Gene Shank, the original designer of the Pultec, through some of that. He was very helpful, but um, he didn't design the transformers. And so he, while he was very helpful with other details about the original designs, um, I was on my own for the transformers and trying right. to find a company that would wind them the same way that they wound them back in the 50s right. through through 80s. So, where do you, how do you um, even do that? Um, very carefully. That's, I mean, uh, um, I, I was lucky about the fourth transformer company that I started working with. Um, we developed a very uh, um, positive relationship, and um, they had started as a small company, and so they were sympathetic to my needs and 
and basically said, we'll hold your hand, you know, and, until you get to a wow. product. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of work. And, uh, well, it shows. So to answer your question that you <laughs> asked at some okay. point in history, um, uh, I mean, both versions are stunning. For me, I really wanted the, uh, the higher frequencies to, to be on a shelf. So that alone, you know, in, in this version was a, was a really great difference for me because I'm just, I don't know why, but I don't overcook the high frequencies, but I am obsessed with having the right amount of them, mm, yeah. <laughs> which is a pretty funny sentence. This is not a very technical answer, but there's something so glorious about the high end um, through these units that, I don't know, just to, to, to my aesthetics, my taste, my ears, I wanted to hear a shelf more than like a specific, yeah. you know, although I, I had done many mixes running through the original versions where it was a specific thing and we just kind of put it to where it sounded right, you know. Um, and actually on, on lots of mixes, what I wound up doing, uh, oddly enough, and, and anyone that has those units should try this if they haven't already, uh, I would set the frequency to 5K and turn that up. That seems really low. <clears throat> it sounds amazing. <laughs> 5K, I remember doing it, I did it all the time. Five, sometimes 4K, um, not on every mix, but on a lot. Uh, especially if I kind of wanted a more sort of forward leaning kind of uh, slightly more caffeinated, uh, maybe rockier mix. Okay. Um, yeah, 5K at like, you know, level four, level five, sometimes even more. You're talking about the 1S3 with the shelf boost, the 5K shelf boost, right? Or are you talking about the, the peak boost? The peak boost. Oh, oh, okay. Peak boost, yeah, on the original yeah, units okay. that I had. Yeah, okay. peak. Okay, sorry. Yeah, not, not what you would go to normally for a mix setting, but I did it all the time. And mm. whenever I took it out, everyone was like, oh, what happened? And put it back <laughs> in, ah! Um, so, it's just for me, the, the shelf works better, and of course, you know, it's a real luxury, but having, um, I never know the right w word for it, but the stepped, the, what do you, oh, what do you right, call the that? Oh, the stepped control, the mastering version, whatever. Um, but if a knob does that, it is a detented or what? Detented or stepped, yeah. Yeah, so it's yeah. just that, to have that, so where like recall is just kind of like bang. Right. And things are so, um, usually here at the studio there's so high stress and high pressure and everyone's just like we need this yesterday and yeah. they give me no warning to turn it around okay. I'll be in the middle of an album and I'll have two or three requests come in go we need a radio mix for the thing and it's got to be delivered by 4 p.m. today and I'm like I'm in the room with Katy Perry I can't do what are you talking right. about so you know Ian my engineer uh, and or me on a lunch break are scrambling to deliver this instrumental mix or a TV mix or a radio mix or a stem of some part of the track where we have to recall everything. And uh, uh, so again, it, it's a luxury, but it's when you're under that kind of gun and having to deliver those sort of uh, deadlines, it, it's real helpful. Yeah, one of the things, the feedbacks that uh, we've received on the step version is that they track so much better um, because of the precision of the tapers um, that the stereo image really holds solid when you're when you're changing something on the mix bus. So we found that very much too. Okay. Very much. It, it made a huge difference. Okay. Um, and that's also part of the wily charm of the original Pultex too. That yeah. just like the the gorgeous you know Neumann mics, uh, they're all different. They all sound different. They all respond yeah. differently. You know, right. for on one pull tech is not the same amount as four in another one, and so yeah, that helps too if you're, okay. especially using it in a, in a mix capacity. Okay.